much. Good evening. I'd just like to ask the Morrison government why they'd like to cause so much tension with our largest trading partner, China, why they'd like to cripple our economy and cause mass unemployment for the country and uh, destroy four of our biggest sectors, education, tourism, mining and agriculture. And how do they propose to come up with the shortfalls? Elaine Pearson, do you take the view that Australia just sees China as being too big to actually stand up to in any meaningful way? Well, I think part of the reason why the Chinese government has reacted so badly is because we very rarely see Australia's voice on issues in China. And I think that needs to change. You know, I think it's actually good that the Chinese government, um, that the Australian government has stood up to the Chinese government in this way. I think what Australia called for in terms of an independent investigation is what any responsible, you know, global power should, should want. And so, you know, I understand um, from the questioner that he's frustrated that, you know, this seems like, you know, missteps on the part of the Australian government. But I think let's be clear about where these missteps originated and why we're in this predicament. And that's because of the mishandling of this crisis in China. But I suppose in many ways, this is a question about whether Australia can afford to do it. I mean, this is our largest trading partner. Well, it's true. And I mean, I think, you know, China's showing that it's a bully. And I think the way you deal with bullies is you don't just roll over and, you know, pipe down. You actually do have to stand up to them. But I think the way that Australia needs to do that, this shouldn't be an Australia-China discussion. The whole world is affected by this pandemic. And I really think that it's important that, you know, other countries come on board. I think Australia should work with a coalition of like-minded governments who are also concerned about the impact of this pandemic and really want to make sure that a situation like this can't happen again. Uh, Michael Fuller-Love, is it clear where Australian business stands on this particular question? Because obviously the role of Twiggy Forrest over the last week has been somewhat central. Kerry Stokes, uh, the billionaire from Western Australia, has also uh, taken a fairly strong position supporting Chinese interests. Uh, is there a split here, not just between Australia and China, but between the Australian government and the business community in how to deal with China? Well, it's a free country in Australia, unlike China. And so Mr Forrest and Mr Stokes are able to put their... Uh, you know, they're able to put their arguments forward. And I don't think we should demonise business leaders. I think they have a legitimate case to make. And I think Tim's right that Australia has strong economic interests in getting the relationship back on track and maintaining a good economic relationship. But one thing I think it's important to remember is that it's in China's interest that the relationship get back on track as well, because we supply many of the resources that fuel China's economic growth that would be very costly for them to switch long-term suppliers. And also, not only are we economically inter interdependent, but we're politically interdependent. And as Elaine says, the world is watching how China behaves towards Australia here. So, we, we often think that we are the ones who are vulnerable, but the truth is that both Australia and China depend on each other economically and politically. So, so what then is the case that Australian business leaders like Twiggy Forrest, like Kerry uh, Stokes are actually making? I mean, some of the comments from Kerry Stokes are defending uh, China's right and Asia's right to, to have wet markets. Well, look, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to defend what Mr Stokes said on wet markets or, or wildlife markets. I would say that, that business leaders have a view to put and it's important that they be able to put that view. The role of the Australian government is to stream together all the different interests that Australia has. There's the interests of the resources sector, there's the rest of the economy, there are human rights issues, there's national security concerns, there's the desire of a democracy to stand up for itself and not, not to be subject to political interference. So ultimately, it's up to, as, as Penny says, it's up to the Australian government to stream all these interests together. Uh, Dave Sharma, ultimately this is a question for the government and the government has been talking about uh, diversifying our supply chains. Uh, where do you make up the shortfall from? Well, I, I don't sort of accept the, the premise necessarily that there will be a shortfall. I mean, countries trade because there's mutual benefit in doing so. We don't trade with China because to do them a favour and they don't buy things from us because it's a favour to us. They buy things from us because it's cost competitive, reliable supply, good quality uh, goods. If you look at China's import mix, for instance, you know, the three countries for whom they import the most goods are 
the Republic of Korea, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. Now, not three countries with whom you think China normally has good relations, but they trade with them extensively because it's in their interest to do so. And what underpins our commercial relationship with China, what has always underpinned it, is the complementarity of our economies. But, but this government is seriously interest. talking about having less students in the Australian tertiary education sector. Where does the shortfall Well, come I from? mean, the truth is, Hamish, we've got less students and less tourists um, full stop because of uh, the coronavirus crisis. We don't have people, we don't have international arrivals in Australia and it's, um, it's going to be some considerable time until that situation returns to normal. So this isn't just a China problem, this is a, this is a problem for the whole, the whole sector. Penny Wong, do you accept that there isn't going to be a shortfall necessarily? <laughs> well, I certainly think our uh, economy has taken a huge hit from the pandemic uh, and a number of our export industries uh, will continue to take a hit. Obviously, tourism is one of them. Um, I think the international education sector is, uh, is a major problem. It's, I think, our fourth largest export industry. Uh, I, the government hasn't paid sufficient attention to it. Uh, uh, some of the comments of the Prime of Mr Morrison telling people to go home, I think, have not sort of boded well for the long-term uh, health of that sector. So, obviously, that is a, a, an important sector of the economy. But I think that the broad issue is this. We have to protect and promote Australia's interests and we have to be prepared to assert those interests uh, and we have to be resilient in the face of a response that is negative when we do so. We have to make sound judgments about that. Uh, but as I said, uh, you know, it, it, it's a relationship, uh, it's a bilateral relationship that is important, that we have to navigate constructively and productively, uh, and we have to, you know, make sure we have a sensible dialogue within the Australian community for it, if I, uh, about it. And may I say, I think it is uh, uh, unfortunate that some of the discussion ends up being driven by different parts of uh, the community. I would, I would hope at this time uh, that the Foreign Minister, Minister Payne, would lead this discussion because I think this is a difficult discussion for the nation. Uh, it is a discussion where there are many interests uh, and there are many views and, frankly, it's also a discussion where it's very easy for issues of prejudice to become enlivened. So it's, it is, would be much better, I think, if we had a more sensible discussion led by the Foreign Minister, who, whose job it is to, to you know, ex explain Australia to the world and explain the world to Australia. Are, are you as saying... Good as, Dave, as good as Dave is, uh, you know, he's, he's not the Foreign Minister. Are, are you saying that the Foreign Minister is failing to do that? Well, I, I just think... I, I think she needs to lead the debate. Uh, and it is a difficult debate. Uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a, a, a discussion about how we engage with this major uh, economic partner uh, whose set of interests uh, at, at times causes uh, differences. Uh, as Michael said, you know, an authoritarian one-party state, we're a democracy that of itself is going to give rise to different interests uh, and different views. So, yes, I, I do think um, it would be better if we heard uh, Maurice Payne's voice more on, on these issues uh, in a measured and sensible way that engage the Australian community about a, 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 a relationship which is going to be very important, continue to be very important to us as we go forward.